Hi, my name is Luigi Sambui and I'm a solutions engineer at Plaid. Today we'll be covering how to manage webhooks and the various differences among different types of webhooks. Webhooks are a notification system that Plaid uses to alert you when new transactions are available for a certain item or if an item goes into a bad state. Those usually consist in HTTP post messages that we send you to a domain that you specify. There are three different places where you can specify this webhook URL. The first one is the link token create route, and it's the API route that you use when creating a new link token, which is then used to launch link. In this route, you specify different products and country codes to customize your link experience. And you can also provide the dedicated webhook URL where we'll send new item updates. The second place where you can specify your webhook URL is in the dedicated item endpoint to update the webhook URL. If you didn't specify during the link token creation, that's not a big deal. You can uh, specify a new one through this route. If you already specified a webhook before, this will simply overwrite it and will send you a webhook notifying you of the new webhook change. We will send this webhook to the new webhook that you've specified. The third way of specifying a webhook it concerns mainly asset reports. The asset product uses a different webhook URL that you have to specify when creating the asset report. This asset webhook notifies you when the asset report is ready. There are four types of transaction webhooks. We tend to send those transaction webhooks to the webhook URL you've specified in the link token creation phase. The first type of transaction webhook is the initial update. This is when we collect the first um, 30 days of transactions for the item. We tend to send this webhook about 15 seconds after item creation. If you try to make a call to transactions before you receive this type of webhook, you'll likely get a product not ready error. After that, we send a historical update webhook, which means that we were able to gather the full financial history for that product. Remember that we'll try to gather as much information as the financial institution allows. We usually guarantee up to 24 months of financial history. The third type of transaction webhook is the default update. This is when we send you a notification alerting you that there are new transactions available for this account. We check for new transactions four times a day and we'll notify you if there are any new transactions available. The fourth type of webhook is transactions removed. If the original financial institution removes a transaction from the record, we will send you a webhook notifying you to uh, eliminate that transaction. We'll provide the transaction ID so that you can easily track this transaction and remove it from your database. This is often used when changing a transaction from pending to posted. So how do you reconcile pending to posted transactions? When we send you a pending transaction, it will have its own transaction ID, but its pending transaction ID will be null because there's no relative pending transactions that it points towards. When we send its relative posted transaction, not only we fire a transaction removed webhook pointing to the previous posted transaction, but this new posted transaction will have a non-null pending transaction ID that uh, will point to the transaction ID of the pending transaction. That way, you will know which transactions to eliminate. It is worth noting that the details between the pending transaction and the posted transaction might not always match. So you should just rely on the pending transaction ID to match those transactions. We can't always trace down the relative pending transaction. So there might be some edge cases where the pending transaction ID field for a posted transaction is still null. 
Now let's talk about item webhooks. We tend to send those when there are updates on the status of a item that you've connected to our ecosystem. The first type of item webhook is the webhook update acknowledged. This is when you use that dedicated endpoint we talked about earlier to update the webhook for an item. We'll send this webhook to the new webhook that you specified. And this is a great way for you to make sure that the new webhook that you specified works and is the correct one. The second type of webhook is called pending expiration. Some items for certain financial institution may have set expiration times. We send you a webhook seven days in advance, giving you the exact expiration timestamp under the webhook type pending expiration. That way you can be as proactive as possible in convincing the user to reconnect the same item with links update mode. The last item webhook is the item error webhook. We send this when there's either a password change or a MFA reset for the given item. In the body of the webhook, you will notice that we'll send a error type of item login required. And that's exactly when you should serve the update mode experience for that item. The user will just have to go through the link flow again, and you'll be able to use the same access token to get fresh financial information. Auth webhooks are the most straightforward, and those are the ones that you use and leverage when you're using the extended auth capabilities like the auth micro deposits. The first one is called automatically verified, and that's when we were able to verify the item with automatic micro deposits. The second auth webhook is called verification expired and we'll send that seven days after the initial link attempt if we were not able to verify the item with automatic micro deposits. And that's a wrap. That's all you need to know about all the webhooks that Plaid will send you. Here's just a bit of final advice. First of all, remember that the asset product uses a different webhook. No matter which webhook you provide for a certain item, once you link it, even if asset is your only product you specified, the correct webhook to be alerted when the asset report will be ready has to be provided in the asset report create endpoint. Once you've done that, you will have to wait for the asset report webhook to come in and alert you that the asset report is ready. Otherwise, if you will go ahead and fetch the asset report, you will likely get a product not ready error. We get a lot of questions around what is Plaid's uh, retry logic. We will attempt to send you a webhook uh, three times over the course of roughly five minutes, and then we will give up in order to not suffocate uh, your network. Finally, these are the four IPs where we will send you uh, our webhooks. If you desire to just whitelist Plaid, you can go ahead and just write this down and make sure to receive uh, webhooks only from those. If we ever are to update those, we will proactively alert uh, customers. Note that whitelisting is not sufficient to verify the authenticity of a webhook. For that, we recommend webhook verification, and that's a topic for the next video.